In Leah Evans' world, there's no such thing as just another wall hanging. It's not a quilt, it's a statement. Her pieces are influenced by aerial photography, maps, satellite imagery, but they're not always based on specific places. There's also an environmental theme to Leah's work, giving it depth and importance. She creates her art in Madison, Wisconsin. Let's go behind the scenes and learn the driving force behind this fine collection. Hi, Leah. Hi, Ned. Well, I appreciate you letting us come in and visit with you. And maybe you could take us around and talk about your workspace. Sure. So just outside my workspace, I keep a, in the yard, I keep a flower garden with daisies, lilies, spiderwort, and irises. My space looks out onto a popular Madison bike path. While ironing, I notice people passing by. And in the warm months, I hear birds and children. Working from home has its benefits, especially while raising young children. My daughters, Netta and Wren, sometimes share the space with me while they play or work on their own projects. I can easily pop into the studio for a short spell in between our daily schedules. My studio is very small. I have one table for ironing and laying out work and materials, and one table for my Kenmore sewing machine. It's a basic home model machine that I've used for 20 years. My grandmother gave it to me when I graduated from college. It works great for me because I don't rely on any programmable or computerized sewing equipment. We'd love to have a look at some of your recent work. Maybe you can show us a few pieces. Yeah, I recently set up a condensed version of my art fair booth. So there's a lot of variety in scale. All the pieces are inspired by maps and satellite imagery or aerial photography. Most pieces explore or address a type of land use or some interaction between people and land. These are my small pieces, which typically have colorful hand dyed scraps of fabric and small stitch details. The frames are made of paper mache and they make nice groupings for small wall spaces, like between doors and windows in old houses like mine. This piece titled Delta re represents my medium scale work. They're framed in poplar or maple shadow boxes and appear to float in the frame. I like working at this scale, 12 inches by 12 inches, because it allows me to include a lot of detail and handwork. My larger free hanging pieces come with a mounting strip and it's easily nailed or screwed into the wall and the pieces attach with Velcro. Where do you get the inspiration for your pieces? Um, I look to a lot of different sources for inspiration. Sometimes it's reading an article about a certain type of land use. Sometimes it's an image that I stumble upon and do more research. This piece I call Hydroglyphs 2. It's part of a two-piece uh, section that um, I, the, the initial inspiration was looking at burial mounds and thinking of our legacy, what we might leave behind that cultures will ponder in the future. So what I did for this piece was gathered as many artificially man, artificially shaped bodies of water. So man-made bodies of water in Florida around residential areas. And some there's some man-made islands in Dubai and marinas and kind of focused on playing with all that imagery together. And the next piece is called Satellite. And again, I was looking at um, satellite imagery of irrigated farmland. So all these patterns were similar to images I'd seen. And I kind of took some of the imagery and changed the colors and played with it and came up with this really intricate piece. And the next one is based on a real place in Dubai um, called the World Archipelago. So the, the initial inspiration for it was reading an article called The World is Sinking. So it was about 
these man-made islands in the shape of the world, a map of the world that were built and then the development stalled and these islands were sinking back into the sea before anything was built on them. So for me, it was a metaphor for climate change and sea levels rising and also this monument to wealth and excess. There's an awful lot going on with your with your artwork. Uh, what are some of the major, uh, the main techniques you use in your process? Um, I have some video that shows me um, stitching. So I spend about a third of my time at the sewing machine. After hand drawing onto the fabric where I plan to be stitching, I stitch over those lines and because I don't use a long arm machine, it looks a bit cumbersome. I also use my machine a lot for piecing fabric, using simple stitches for design elements and quilting layers together. In this video, I'm stitching layers together for reverse applique. The technique of a reverse applique can be done by hand, layering fabric, cutting sections off the top and carefully folding raw edges under to be stitched out of sight. They can also be done on the machine with machine stitching. After stitching the outlines of the shapes I want, I then take scissors and hand cut away the extra fabric on the outside of the shape. The cutting is tedious, time consuming, and sometimes unforgiving. And we've sped this video up because it's also a bit slow and boring. It takes a lot of practice not to cut through too many layers or to cut the machine stitches. It, it's also hard on my hands and I deal with carpal tunnel and wear and tear arthritis. But despite that, I love this technique and the freedom it gives me. The shapes can be slender and organic. I can keep adding layers of reverse applique to create more depth and detail. The subtractive quality of the technique mimics erosion, which feeds nicely into pieces that are based on water. This particular piece is based on contour farming in the Driftless area of Wisconsin. The techniques of piecing, reverse applique, and machine embroidery are combined to show patterns and property divisions. All of my quilts combine several techniques. The last step is almost always um, hand embroidery, so showing symbols and markers that encourage questions. And part of my love of maps is looking at them and puzzling about what all the details mean. And then Go ahead, Ned. No, I, I was just looking at, the, there's so much going on, Leah. Where do you go to get your materials to put all this together? Yeah, I. that's also a big time consuming endeavor. I about 70% salvage materials in my pieces. And this video shows me processing linen fabric from a pair of pants that I bought at a thrift store. My favorite local place to go sells clothing castoffs from secondhand stores. So basically the stuff they get that they just can't sell, the volume and the quality just doesn't allow it. Um, this, and they also sell by the pound. So I go there, find the materials I need, wash them, take them apart. Um, and that can be pretty time consuming, but the raw material is super inexpensive and keeps something out of a landfill. I also use upholstery remnants. This video shows linen fabric that is all from garments that I've repurposed. I also use upholstery scraps and scraps from other dyers um, and mostly natural fibers. Here I am using those pieces from a garment or sometimes commercial prints that I over dye and I'm working in my basement dyeing those with fiber reactive dyes. Um, and because I'm open to spending all this time taking, taking everything apart um, and also using small scraps, uh, it, kind of, it saves me saves me the time and I guess the money that I'd be spending on new materials. Wow. Where do people go to, to see your work and to, and, and to purchase a piece for themselves? Yeah, I keep my website um, pretty current on the larger pieces so you can see available work there. And then I also have links to an Etsy site. Um, my 
shop is Leah Evans Textiles. So it's the same as my website that's on Etsy. And then also on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Leah Evans Textiles is the name I use there too. So I can post smaller things there and just keep people updated on what I'm working on, what shows I'll be doing when we start doing shows again. Um, and just, yeah, that's where they can follow me. Before I let you go, I have, I, I'm really curious, where do you think your work is going in the years ahead? Yeah, I, I'm really pushing for more involved stories about land use. And I, I pull from historical context and historical maps and issues that we're dealing with now. Um, I'm really excited about working with imagery of volcanoes. I went to Hawaii last summer and spent some time at Volcanoes National Park, and I'd like to keep pursuing pieces about human interaction with volcanoes. Now that is something I would look forward to seeing. <laughs> Leah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and showing us around. Thank you, Ned, it's been great. And we want to thank you for watching this Thomas William Furniture Virtual Art Fair behind the scenes. And we welcome you to check out all the other artists on the tour. <laughs>